Howdy, today we've got a 1851 Colt Navy uh, cap and ball revolver. This is uh, Colt's probably second, fam second most famous uh, revolver. The first one being the 1873 Colt 45, also known as the uh, Peacemaker. But this is the one that essentially went through uh, um, a lot of the Indian Wars as well as the uh, Civil War between the, uh, the states. So today we're gonna go over how to go about uh, loading it and firing it. Is if you look on this side, we've got a, a loading gate, we've got uh, the cylinder itself, we have the loading ram. This is what's gonna push our, uh, our uh, um, lead balls down into the uh, cylinder. And we're gonna go from there. So the first thing you do is at this point in time, it's unloaded, there's nothing in it, and there's no percussion caps on any of the, any of the nipples. We're gonna do what's known as putting the gun on half cock. That's where you bring the, uh, the uh, uh, hammer back halfway. Full cock is where you would go if you're gonna go firing it, but we're just gonna go to half cock because that's where we need to go to load it. You'll notice that at half cock, that the cylinder revolves freely. And the reason is, is we need to be able to then load each one of the cylinder holes with powder and a ball. So the way in which we go about doing that is we have what's known as generically called a powder horn. So back in the old days, they didn't have time to measure out any particular weight of powder, they did it based off of volume. And so what we're dealing with is the amount of powder that fits into this little brass spout right here. It's roughly about 15 grains of black powder. So the way in which this works is we're gonna put our finger over the top. We are going to flip the little switch here on the side. We're gonna dump it over. And at this point in time, the spout is filling with black powder. I'm going to let go of the little lever and I'm going to remove my finger and you can see in there that it is full of black powder. That is roughly 15 grains of black powder. So at this point in time, we are now going to put that down into one of our cylinders. So we have now filled up one cylinder with black powder. You can probably see it in that one. Mm -hmm. At this point in time, we're gonna go do all of them. So at this point in time, we've loaded all the cylinders with black powder. Yeah, we paused the magic of Hollywood, right? And so uh, everything's loaded up. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually going to put a wad on top of that. And a wad is just a little piece of uh, paper or felt or uh, cloth that separates the, the area between the powder and the, the ball. And so we're going to do that on all the cylinders here. The six shooters, they would only load five of the six. So as you can see, we now have the wad in place. And now we're actually going to load a ball. So we're going to loosen up our, our ram here because we're going to need that. What we're going to do is we're going to place a ball into the chamber. You can see that there. Actually, here, let's push that to around a little bit. Put this okay. okay, so here we are, we've got our ball. We're now going to take the ram and we're going to use that to push the ball down into the cylinder. So I'm gonna rotate that around so you can see what it looks like. You can see that there is now a lead ball down in that cylinder. And let me rotate this around here and you can actually see. Uh, can you see down in this one right here? You can actually see a little bit of the lead mm -hmm. that has been shaved off the ball when we force it down into the cylinder. The ball is just a little smaller. And the reason is, is you want a nice tight fit. Now in the old days, because uh, you carried this open, right? It was in a holster. Many times they, they would do what's known as filling the, the cases with a beeswax or a paraffin. So they would melt it in there. In this case, I have preformed uh, beeswax, paraffin seals. And so what they would do is they would put this on top of the bullet like this, 
which would have the habit of sealing it all in and keeping anything from coming out or for that matter, any weather going in. Now, the reason you would do this is because six shooters can incur what's known as a chain fire. And a chain fire are the, all the hot gases that are coming out of one cylinder can actually set off the powder that's in the other cylinders as well. So in this case, we're just gonna seat that a little bit, make sure it's all down there. And if you look close up on the cylinders, that's what we're looking at right there. All right, so at this point in time, the firearm is almost ready to go. The only thing that we're missing is we're missing the percussion caps themselves. Thanks to the wonders of 3D printing, you know, modern day, you can see I have these little percussion caps that are pinched in here. And so what they are is they're a little round copper cap that has a little bit of an explosive. It's in, in the old days, it was called a mercury fulminate that actually sits in there. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this to place the caps on the nipples. Yeah, I know, hey, hey. So that's what a placed cap looks like. So we're gonna rotate it around here and we're gonna do the next one. So you put it on and pull it off. And at this point in time, this is a loaded firearm that is ready to shoot. Now we're only at half cock, so we can't actually pull the trigger and have it go off what we have to do to be able to shoot it is we need to pull the trigger all the way back to full cock and now we're ready to go. And at this point in time, you can see that, let's go to half cock, that all the percussion caps are no longer on there. The idea is that as you shoot them, they actually fall off and the gun has now essentially empty and ready to be reloaded. Uh, Colt was the one that made everything possible. What he did is not only did Colt invent the system that automatically advances the cylinder every time you pull the hammer back, but Colt actually uh, invented automation for firearms and he invented interchangeability about 60 years before henry ford did it for the automobile and that's actually why uh in the wild wild west everybody used colts because they were so easy to fix repair work on and get a hold of